Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, race number nine at Kentucky Downs on Saturday. The grade three, $1 million uh, Music City stakes, six and a half furlongs, fillies and mares over the European configuration at Kentucky Downs. Before we take a look at this big field, remember that the Labor Day sale is ongoing at shop.drf.com, up to 50% off PP's picks, clock reports, digital paper, and tons more. Again, learn more, shop. Dot drf .com. Here's the field for the grade three Music City, an overflow group, 12 in the body of the race, 13 through 16 entered as also eligibles. The 10 LJ's Emma, tepid seven to two morning line favorite, seeking her fourth straight victory. In good form right now, just pulled off a, a pretty big upset at Saratoga a few weeks ago, Dan. They're going to wheel her back pretty quickly here, but you can't knock what she's been doing lately. Got to think this pace is going to be honest, Mike. We throw up the time form U.S. pace projector. The six determined jester just went gate to wire in her seasonal debut against restricted competition at Colonial Downs. American Apple is coming off of a gate to wire win. LJ's Emma, the good news with her is she can pretty much adapt to any kind of pace scenario. I do agree that she'll tuck in behind the pace. Curious to see how John Velasquez plays this with the nine exceed, who's taking a little class drop, try and turf for the first time. Yeah, that in some ways a seed could be could be the key to this race. Um, Dan, it's not like she's a huge speed horse, but she's got a little pedigree for top connections, and they're making a surface switch here off of a, a pretty disappointing uh, performance the last time we saw her. We'll see. I mean, I guess determined Jester makes the lead in this race, Dan. She's got plenty of early speed. I didn't necessarily think this, this pace was going to be super fast. You can do a lot worse than a horse with previous winning experience at Kentucky Downs. And the one Dance Macabre, she won a stake going six and a half at Kentucky Downs last year. And she's coming into this race in pretty good form. She just won the Momzel at Churchill Downs. Now, that was four months ago. She got a very good trip, saving ground, shooting up the inside. But boy, you usually don't see turf stakes sprint races won by open lengths. She won very easily. Yeah, I agree with you. The trip kind of did work out for her there, but she made that trip because she had the speed, even though she was dropping back from a mile to five and a half. She got that position, moved up the rail when it was open for her. And you're right. She just kicked away from that field. That was a good performance. I didn't, I can't say that I particularly liked her chances stretching out to a mile off the layoff, Dan. She handled that just fine and ran really well that day. She was a good two-year-old. Plenty to like here. She really has a nice burst of speed. We saw that two starts back going a mile in the Here Comes the Bride, where she split horses with a three-wide bid on the second turn. And then last time, she was in between horses, but she used that burst of speed to grab the rail entering the turn. Distance and course, obviously not an issue. Jill Jitterbug is going to try turf for the first time. She is a big price. Daughter of cross traffic, only 5% winners with turf sprinters. The dam did win on the surface, however. I do think she'll be able to replicate her decent synthetic form on turf, but this is a tougher group than the one she's been facing over the synth. Yeah, I don't think just replicating her synthetic form um, on the turf is going to get it done in here. I think she's going to have to be better on this surface. We'll see if she is. I didn't necessarily have high hopes for it, um, but I respect these, these connections taking a shot. The three queen Picasso is cutting back in distance. I don't mind that at all. Going six and a half at Kentucky Downs, especially for a top trainer like Christophe Clement. This horse showed some ability in her first two starts. They tried to get her to go the one turn mile at Woodbine last time out. Couldn't argue with the trip. She kind of made it her own trip, just setting the pace. I have a feeling the connections want to take her back and save some of that speed for the end. Yeah, they probably do. I mean, even when you go back and pull that replay for the Colleen there, I mean, they didn't want her on the lead there. She was under a big hold, but nobody else was going. She wound up cutting the pace. All in all, it was a pretty soft trip. She took no pressure up there. She was on a clear lead past the eighth pole, and she just got run down, as far as I could tell, without any excuse. I mean, I guess you could look at it and say, well, she doesn't want to be on the lead. She's better when she has a target, and that'll make the difference. I never look at horses that way. Um, this horse had a great trip last time, and just and, and to me, lost without excuse. Her prior two races were good, but I, I can't say that I was blown away by them, Dan. Trevor McCarthy gave the four Mally Moo a genius ride in the Pen Oaks. It was a race that just didn't have any kind of pace. Mally Moo went to the front. They went a mile race. Look at those fractions. 49 and two for the half. No wonder Mally Moo has enough at 11 to one to pull off the upset. After this race, this filly went through the auction ring. She sold for $550,000, and she's now with Todd Pletcher. Yeah, I, I don't want to, I won't knock her too much, Dan. I mean, she did what she did last time and picked up a pretty nice win um, at, at, at uh, Penn National, but 
she just sort of had all the best of it there in a race where the two favorites were complete no-shows, just didn't do anything. Um, and this horse managed to hang on at the end. Her prior form is good. It just didn't necessarily make me want to better in this race. Lots been going on recently for the number five, Mama's Girl. She raced two weeks ago overseas. Now she's shipped over. She's had to spend some time in quarantine. She fits with this caliber of competition. She won her first two starts over there, including a group stake. Then they threw her in some really tough competition. Uh, again, she fits, and she didn't exactly have the easiest trip last time out. I'm not sure she would have won with the cleanest. Yeah, I don't think she would have either. I don't know. I To me, this was the toughest call in the race that I really wanted to like her when I started going through the race. I really did think she ran well in her first two starts there, separated by a layoff. And I guess I you know, was willing to be um, a little lenient on the two group one tries where she just looked a little bit overmatched. I don't know, man. I don't like her last two races. I, I, she had a little trouble last time, but overall, I thought it was a good trip. And she just didn't really fire in that race. Um, I don't know. It, start, it makes me wonder how good she is, but she's interesting from a lot of different angles. Projected pace setter is the six determined jester who went fast on the lead at Colonial last time out. It was her first race off a lengthy layoff. She blitzed the opening quarter in 21 and two while facing pressure. And then she stayed about her business to win very easily as the favorite. She's stepping up in class, but to me, the most important thing is she's stepping up at distance. I wonder if the six and a half of Kentucky Downs plays a little longer. Yeah, I'd worry about that, too. I um, mean, she did. It feels like maybe she took a step forward last time uh, to win off the layoff, but I don't know, man. I think she has to improve again, especially as she stretches out a little bit here. She ran in, they ran her in that futurity last year um, where she wasn't like some kind of huge price. I just I'm not sure how good that race is, Dan. And she was not really effective there. Um, five of those horses hit the wire together, a big blanket finish, and she wasn't even part of that. Secret Money tried to stretch out last time out in the grade three Lake George at Saratoga and found herself on the lead under Javier Castellano. Let's watch this race. Secret Money got away with a nice, easy opening quarter, 25 seconds flat, came off the rail, turning into the stretch. Um, surge capacity, the winner of this race, who gets through on the inside, is pretty good. You come back to run second in the graded Lake Placid with an 88 buyer. I just wonder if this distance was a little far for Secret Money, who's now cutting back for Brendan Walsh. Yeah, I would look at, I'd be willing to look at her that way too. We'll see what kind of price she winds up being here. Yeah, she runs fine in here. I think those one, two finishers, those two Chad Brown, Klarovich horses, I think they're both pretty good. Um, and it's not like this horse just totally gave it up to them. Although it's at least worth pointing out that pace was pretty slow that she was cutting. So we'll see. I like her cutting back. Her prior races to me are fine. They didn't, I didn't love her off of those races, Dan, but I do like her going shorter. The eight American Apple was a graded stakes winner last year at two, going six at Aqueduct. I'm not sure she's improved that much this year, but she still has potent speed. She's been beaten by a couple of these horses already. Third last time at Ellis going five and a half. She had to really work hard on the lead that day. She has shown the ability to sit and finish, so maybe she'll try to sit second and third, be more patiently handled this time around. Yeah, I can see that happening. I, I wonder if it'll make that much of a difference. I, she's another horse, so I'm, I'm just not sure how good she is. I'll give her credit for just showing up and running every single time, no matter what. I mean, it doesn't matter the distance. They ship her around a little bit, and she will just show up and run her race. She's got that one big win as a two-year-old, the grade three. She was a million to one that day. She got a perfect trip, and she just got the job done. And her races since then are fine, but they didn't necessarily make me want to bet her back in this race. The seed won her debut for Chad Brown on the dirt, then just faced some very tough competition, the likes of Red Carpet Ready and Pretty Mischievous, and her uh, workmate randomized last time out in the Wilton. She didn't run very well at all in that race, just a complete no-show, and now Chad's going to try turf. She has plenty of pedigree. She's by into mischief. The dam was a grade three stakes winner. A seed is a half to a grade three winning turf sprinter overseas, so uh, you got to respect this pedigree, and maybe she just fits well at this class level. Yeah, I agree. I mean, listen, she's a she's a real wild card for these connections. And, you know, maybe you'll even get a price. I would wait and see, though, what kind of price she's going to be, because I don't think you want to go too short on her um, at the 10 to 1 morning line, though. I think she's at least viable. She was really bad in the Wilton last time. It was a day where the rail was really good in this horse, even though it was only a four horse field. She never got anywhere near the rail and then she didn't fire at all. But her prior form was actually pretty good. I mean, she has some talent. Another daughter of Into Mischief's up next. That's the 10, LJ's Emma. She's won three in a row. She's your morning line favor of this 92 buyer victory in the Galway at Saratoga. She's still very green. She makes the lead here. She must change leads three, four times in the stretch, but she's still pretty good. She catches Stone Silent, who is cutting out the pace and looks strong at the 316th ball. 
Yeah, this horse on the lead is not stopping, I don't think, Dan. I think you know, LJ Zemma is just really determined here, and she's just going to get up at the end, as you mentioned, despite changing leads a million times. But a really good finish. And by the way, that's exactly how she won her prior two starts in Kentucky, just really determined through the stretch. She had the leaders in her sights in all of those races, and she was dead game to close them down. A horse definitely worth some consideration is the 11 bling. I liked her one and only turf sprint. That was last summer at Ellis Park going five and a half furlongs. She was super impressive that day. Now, they've stretched her out in distances. She's done pretty well going longer. Last time out, she was on the lead in the pucker up. The favorite, Safine, just ran her down in the shadow of the wire. I like her cutting back in distance, and she's tactical enough. She's not going to be a million out of it. I agree with all that stuff. I really, really liked her career debut. She's been fine since then in some tough in some tougher races. She didn't necessarily have an excuse last time, but she still ran well. The the uh, one three finishers in that race are both really good fillies. Um, so I, I think this this uh, filly actually ran fine in there, and I like her cutting back and distance. I'm definitely using this horse. Back down from Canada is the 12 Mohawk Trail. She went two for two at Woodbine over the summer, including this win in the Ontario Colleen. She was 10 to one or greater in both of her races at Woodbine. She made her followers some coin. Here she is getting the better of Queen Picasso, who's on the lead and looks home free at six to five. But Mohawk Trail comes rolling late. Yeah, I mean, she somehow gets this done. That's Queen Picasso on a clear lead here, Dan. And it looks like she's going to hold on, but uh, you can see that horse on the lead just... She's not really finishing with anything here, and Mohawk Trail is going to gun her down at the end. Her overall form, really good. It does kind of feel like she's just getting better every time they send her out there. The shorter distance, no issue. 13 through 16 entered on the also eligible list. I guess of the AEs, the 16 playlist is a horse I'd be most interested in, but she's going to need a lot of scratches to get in. I think she's John Velasquez's first call over a seed. She's won her last three for Wesley Ward. Let's take a look at our top selections. Four. The Music City, Dance Macabre has been in very good form. She handles a mile. She handles five and a half. This distance will hit her right between the eyes, and she can work out a good trip. Yeah, I just thought this was a really tough race, Dan. Um, and I, I just felt like Dance Macabre was, she was just reliable. She shows up and she runs every time. The distance is no problem. Obviously, the, the fact that she's already won here over course and distance is another sort of feather in her cap. I just took her without a ton of confidence. But I, I do think there are other ways to go in this race. I think the seven secret money has some upside. I like her cutting back in distance. I just think the two turn mile was a bit too far for her last time out against a quality winner. One five eleven seven for Mike. Seven ten one nine for me. It's the Music City. A lot of money on the line at Kentucky Downs on Saturday. Best of luck.